and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Barbara May. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present to raise your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and take charge of your destiny so you can spread your wings and soar. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, and angel oracle cards to assist you in remembering why you are here, your spiritual path, and clarity on the next steps to take. I offer a multi-dimensional virtual retreat, several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, a six-week guided meditation series to help you gain confidence, and various workshops. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guide meditation or angel oracle card reading, or something that my guests might do, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Barbara May, about being between worlds as a starseed and all that entails. Now, Barbara May is co-founder and partial owner of Mystic Sisters, a gifted holistic practitioner, divine frequency healer, public speaker, and certified in a variety of alternative spiritual practices. Working with sound, frequency and energy has been a part of her life ever since she was very young. She believes that we came to this planet to learn how to transform the energy and work with it to create balance and harmony, to experience life at its fullest. Barbara is a starseed who discovered she was related to the Pleiadians and now works with Pleiadian energy um, after working with earth energy and witchcraft for many years. Barbara also has a podcast called The Barbara May Show, so do check that out. Now, with testimonials such as, Barbara has such angelic energy and there is never any doubt that she truly cares and her intentions are genuine. I have always found my reasons with Barbara to be very accurate. And I can truly recommend Barbara's services to help you in everyday life or on your spiritual journey. And Barbara is like a fairy with a magic wand that makes you feel so much better in an instant. Barbara is such a beautiful soul and I cannot recommend her enough. So without further delay, hello Barbara and welcome to Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, hi, thank you very much for having me. It's so nice to hear those reviews. <laughs> when you read them, it's completely different. But it's like, oh, that's very nice. <laughs> I know, you you often, you often forget about it, don't you? And then you, and you go, oh, actually, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. good. Yeah, no. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. I'm very well. How are you? Yes, not too bad. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Barbara and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Barbara, why don't you tell us more about your fascinating journey and what it's like between the worlds? Um, so where to start? Um I am fascinated by energy and I'm fascinated um, about frequencies and the vibrations. And since a very young age, I have noticed that we don't only have a one world and we do not only have one reality. And um, by seeing this and experiencing um being in between realities and understand that those worlds are completely different. Um, I have had a chance to explore it a little bit more <laughs> and learn a little bit more about it. And um, yesterday I was thinking about this interview and I was thinking that I wish that I have been taught everything that I have learned and I had to learn by myself for the last 34 years by someone else, because it will be a lot different. Um, as you and listeners know that um, our perception is always our reality. And and I had to figure it out myself. I used to um, see numbers a lot when I was little. So I had the numbers um, around people, the sacred geometry, colors, vibrations, um, visions, 
of different um, shapes with colors. It's very hard to describe it because so it's, it's the way how I see it, if you know what I mean. And all those visions had some feelings and smell and taste that I have been experiencing and I was able to decode this um, into a sentence yeah. <laughs> and things like that. And that's that's how I kind of noticed that, um, uh, that we are constantly in between realities um, and those realities are those different worlds. So it is fascinating. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. So so as a, as a child, you know, you've got all this going on. What were people around you? You know, oh. were, what, what did they think? Well, I wasn't really talking about it. I just believed that I was um, I was judged because I always expressed myself a little bit different because I was seeing things differently. And um, and I didn't fit in. I didn't fit in a school. I didn't fit in with with the normal children because I had a different perception. Um, I was very lucky with my parents because my parents um, both are artists and very bohemian and very free spirited people and and they were never judging so they always took me the way the way how I was you know um and tried to listen to me I used to hear voices and those voices were repeating constantly and and I never felt shy to talk about it um because I haven't been judged so other people I don't know I just feel that I haven't had a very close friends for a long time um, because I was slightly different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and teachers at school, they always thought that I was making things up because it was, yeah, it was different, different vision. I had different vision. But as the time um, changed and, and I grew up, I stopped talking about these things until I found my tribe. <laughs> Found found the crazy people. <laughs> unique. Oh, yeah, unique. The unique people. And and I opened up again and they gave me a confidence to stop being shy and and feel feel like alien. So I start talking about it and I own it now, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Um I think many people are experiencing burnouts and they are experiencing extreme happiness um extreme flow of creativity or a sudden sadness and they don't know what is going on and one of the reasons why is because they don't understand the core of the vibrations and the core of the energy the knowledge of the energy, how everything is made out of energy, how everything has a hold in the vibration. Um, you know, this is a very um, simple example. It's like when we are designing our home, some people choose a glass table and some people choose a wooden table. Some people choose as a carpet. Some people choose a wooden floor and et cetera. And the reason, is, uh, the reason behind it is because those materials are matching our frequency we are building um the environment around us based on the vibration and the frequency um so so yeah so i as i said i wish that i have been taught i have been explained this before why yeah why i have chosen the things i have chosen yeah, yeah. I yeah, I can, I can imagine sort of like, you, you know, well, I imagine I know that there are, um, the, you know, people that I've come across and that that have had the same sort of like ex experience, um, you know, it's like, I don't fit in here. Um, you know, it's it's like pe people are people are judging me and I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly the same as that that person there. And I think a lot of a lot of young people these days are exactly the same, but they're not embracing that uniqueness they're literally trying to form and actually blend in with with other people which is taking them off their path and giving them all issues that really they shouldn't be they shouldn't be having does that make sense yeah absolutely suppressing it um in a way i remember there was this um very simple pattern back in a day <laughs> i call it simple pattern because that's how i see it 
And um, and he was like, okay, well, you are 16 years old. You need to find a boyfriend. <laughs> so I followed it because that's 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 how it was because I wanted to fit in. But that wasn't that wasn't my choice. That's not what I wanted to do. And um, and I'm noticing it with my daughter who is just only six years old. I'm noticing that she is making things up at school because she's trying to fit in. However, she's completely different and she sees um, things completely different. Um, so I'm trying to like teach her about the energies and and teach her about the the vibrations and how you actually transform it. Um, in order to create exactly what you want. Um, and that's what I have learned um, how to do, I think it's now 10 years ago. And I have been using it since. First of all, I haven't been talking about it at all. I've just been doing it um, my own advantage, if you know what I mean. Oh. And, um, and then uh, people become more interested. So I started to share it and teach it and use it as a, one of the healing um practices as well excellent and it's great that your daughter's you know got someone like you who'll actually encourage encourage her for it and yeah a lot of young people these days don't under don't understand the need to be um, unique you know, I loved it you know I loved being different um as, as 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 a child I was quite happy you know if I had the kid come up to me well if you don't do what I do then you can't be my friend and I'll be like well, I don't want you as a friend then because you don't want to do what I want to do, you know, but a lot of young people these days because of society don't have that. So it's absolutely brilliant that your daughter's got that and she should end, you know, end up finding the path she's supposed to be on and like-minded people because um, I'm sure there are going to be other children that have got equally, um, uh, you know, parents that, that are understanding um, of, of that as well. So, you kind of like you're this unique person as 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 uh, when when you were younger. So it's when all of you... us are. <laughs> <laughs> so so you kind of like so you kind of like um, as I mentioned the thing you went down the um, witchcraft or the Wicca route etc. So did that come about because you were unique and different and you weren't sure what you were at the time or how how did that all come about? I used to hear those voices um, when I was little. Uh, until this day, I do not know if they were positive or negative. I do not know where they came from. But I used to hear plants. We used to have so many plants at, at home. And and I used to hear them calling me to give them water. <laughs> so, um, and I used to have a conversations with, with them. But I wasn't, um, I wasn't talking. It was kind of like you know, on the energetic level and things like that. And and I always felt very um, drawn to witchcraft. Um, I I am obsessed with sacred geometry. And um, one of the reasons is because I have been seeing a sacred geometry around the people. And I think that was kind of the first way how I learned how to understand and read the energy it was through the sacred geometry um, about the balances, the harmonies and disharmony of the shapes and patterns. And that's what I, uh, that's, I, I discovered, obviously, pentagrams and, and things like that. So I learned how to draw them. And when I was drawing them, I felt very empowered. And um, I told you this before, um, when I was little, um, when any visitors used to come to our house, they used to bring my brother and I crystals as a present. I do not know if if it was in a fashion back in the day or why, what was the reason for it. But we had so many crystals and I start placing crystals around though, uh, around those um, sacred geometry shapes. And I was creating my own, um, own crystal grids. And um um, and then obviously, what do you have when you're little? You know, you have got the grass, you have got the plants, you are experiencing a fire and you're burning things and there is a moon. And I don't know, it just somehow, it just somehow put it all together. And I have created spells uh, to the point that I have realized that we have to be very careful what we, what we wish for, because I have done so many spells and they are still working until this day um 
yeah sorry i forgot completely forgot what what were you asking i probably went completely off the track that's that, that's, that's okay i do that all the time and i go <laughs> I'm actually talking about um but I always look at it whatever is meant to you know somebody will always get something from from what you were saying so we're saying about you know how you got into um into witchcraft or that which really is earth magic um uh I I, I always like to refer to it more as a um, pagan earth magic um because that to me has a nicer ring um has has a nicer ring to it because I think witchcraft which has been given a bad connotation um over the years and the word and that the word has changed um so so i yeah i like um pagan earth earth magic because i think that's so much so 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 much nicer so so you so you're doing um the uh, earth magic and everything um when did you suddenly realize you're a star seed <laughs> So that only happened recently. Um, my business partner, Maria, and I started Mystic Sisters, and she she's a starseed. Um, she speaks light language. And I have been observing her, um, what, what she has been doing, and I have remembered that I used to speak light language when I was little. And I was like, I recognize this. I recognize this. I was like, oh, my goodness, I recognize the sound. And I was fascinated by the fact that someone is using the language, the melody, the vibration of something what I, I recognize. <laughs> it was like, this is, this is incredible. Um, and um, obviously she works with the Arcturian Council of Light. That is something which I don't feel connected to at all. And I have been trying to um, find out about the other, um, other star seats and, um, and the constellations. And I came across the Pleiadians. And I have been um, doing my research and I wrote this thing and um, it felt like it has been written by me. Obviously it hasn't, but my ideology, everything that I represent, everything that I have been working since I was very little, everything that I am talking about has been written written there. And, and I was just reading the book, reading, 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 watching the videos, watching people channeling the Palladians. And I was I was shocked because the thing which I am most passionate about is about the love energy, about the energy where we came from. And that is something what you have as well. And that's why you own who you are. That's why you are not feeling embarrassed to talk about uh, your experiences. And that's why we are so powerful because we own the energy. And um, most of my clients I work with, we always work with the heart and sometimes I feel like a freaking hippie because I'm like, you know, it's all about love. It's all about love, you know, but it is all, all about that. And um, the frequency vibrations and the sound, that is something which I have been working with since I was very little. Um, I play so many instruments and I've been using the music and the melody and trying to compose music in order to heal and move the energy. So, um so I was like, oh, oh my goodness, like this book, everything what is written, everything what Palladian stands for, you know, it's like, it felt like um, being called back home. And this might sound very funny, but um, I feel like I am finally understood. Mm. I have finally found where I am coming from. So, um, so I have started working with the energy, um, try to embody it and, um, and put it into the healings. And my healings, you know, every single healer works differently. Some healings are what we receive are very gentle. Um, some of them are extremely powerful. But my healings, as soon as I start working with the Palladian energy and I have accepted that's where I am coming from, become uh, very strong and very direct um, so I used to before, um, when I was doing any energy work, it was very general, but now it's, uh, very direct to the organs and, and, um, yeah, working just with the heart and expand and every single client I have and every single person I have, even if I teach meditation, they're constantly crying. And it's like, <laughs> oh my goodness, everybody who comes and see you, they just cry. But that is because, um, I'm using the, um, the, their energy, the energy of um, of love, and that's what they stand for. So, 
So that was a big, big, big realization because I always thought I was all about the earth. I have got nothing to do with the star seed. That is just too out there for me. And, and I'm very grounded and I want to be down here. I don't want to be up there. So it's incredible when we try to use a different energy um, in whatever we do, you know, we just embody it, how much difference it makes. I find it hugely fascinating. Yeah, it is. And and the and the and the beauty is um, you know, when you're connected to the earth and you're connected to the your, um star seeds to the higher energy, you're bringing that balance into the into the into the here and now. You know, I'm very much um grounded, very much earth based. Um, but I'm also very much aware of uh, um being a star seed and um, the higher dimensions and it's I always liken it to being a tree I, I always liken to myself to being a tree so that uh, my body is my trunk on this on this earth but my roots go down and ground me and keep me connected to Gaia and bring that energy up into me but um, sort of like I have leaves and branches growing out of me that connect with the higher energies that bring those down in in into now so I so I think it's it's um when you recognize you've got earth and and um, air you can bring them into balance into the here and now um, which is absolutely brilliant that you've got both of those as well and you can bring that balance here absolutely and also the also the empowerment and the freedom when you find the balance and when you learn a balance uh, I, I can't i can't explain it how amazing it is i'm 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 so lucky um, that I have had the experience um, and the knowledge. It just came out of nowhere and it finally started to make sense. That's why I'm so passionate about, about my work. Um, what I found um, very, um, what I found very interesting, and not many people know this, is that when this energy is activated, it creates this golden shield around us it doesn't have to be golden some people might think it's silver whatever it's just this protective shield and that is the time when we attract every single thing we want into our life five years ago no five seven years ago now um i had a year when everything i wanted everything i thought about was coming to me um, I manifested a house, I manifested a husband, uh, um, I manifested uh, a driving license, I manifested a car, I manifested an enormous amount of holidays. And years later, I was thinking, how is it possible that it's not happening right now? What was different about this year? And the first thing that came to my mind was that I was incredibly happy. So that was one of, one of the reasons. That was, I was doing so much work um, with my... Uh, mental and physical development um, I didn't say no to anything I have taken every single opportunity there was I wasn't worried about the finances I don't know I was just so happy and and I have realized that is what everyone needs to learn to do even now it's very difficult to kind of act reactivate the life energy because some people need the sun you know some people need a family some people need this some people need to do that and etc but when we do that we are supernatural and unstoppable so um so yeah so i discovered the book bleedians and and that was it it's like ta -da! <laughs> <laughs> here i am <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that little bell that's gone off. Yeah, yeah. Let's get on with this. Let's let's yeah. let's, let's 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 keep going. Let's see where this where this takes us. Um, you know where we end up. What what do we um we we end up with? So how do you normally work with clients? So um, you book the you book a session. I I don't see you. I don't know who you are. And prior to our session, I read your energy. So I write down every single thing what comes to mind. Triangle, star, chicken, plastic bags, anything, because that's that's how I see it. Um, and then I decode it. And then 
when uh, we jump on a call, obviously now during the COVID, it's been more um, through a call, um, then I tell you everything, what I have picked up on. Um, I'm in, I might mention names, I might mention people, I might mention situation, I might describe the room you are in or you have been in, um, how it felt, taste, all sorts of stuff. And then I will tell you to decide what you want to talk about and what you want to concentrate on because someone might want the reading for love, someone might, might want it for health and et cetera. And then we, and then we open up the reading. But if I was having a one-to-one, -one, I read the energy inside of the house. So I do most of my clients, I do there at their house or they come to um, one of the treatment rooms. But um, we are shifting the energy and we're moving things around. I tell you when, where things are stuck and what doesn't work in your life um, at that current situation. Um, we talk about health and it's like feng shui, but... It, it's not, it's not, I wouldn't like to relate it to that. Yeah. Because it is, yeah, it's just, yeah, I can't explain it's, it. It's its own unique energy. It is, it is, it is very different. And we're trying to shift the energy in order for the client to receive what, whatever they want. Um, but I always, every single person I work with, um, they need to have an intention. So why are they coming to me? Um, I don't normally do just like random, random readings and things like that um, because that's not who I am, <laughs> you know. Um, I like to fix things. I like to make things better. Um, so I pretty much work with the people who have got serious health issues or who are struggling with a financial um, situation or something's going on in the family or things are not moving forward. So those are usually the the clients who come to me, like the ones who feel stuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, because again, I I wouldn't call myself a medium, you know, or yeah, I'm not going to tell you that you are going to die age of seventy five and you're going to have three dogs and a cat and and you might break your leg on fifteenth of February, you know. So that's not that's not the way I do. <laughs> no. No, um, and and again, you know, any mediums, um, psychics that do work that, that's to give you advance notice for you to change something so that that doesn't happen um, uh, in 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 the future. So, how did Mystic Sisters come about? So, Mystic Sisters um, started in December last year, and it's a very funny story because it started with 55 emails. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, literally um and maria and i are long time friends um and and we've always been talking about like what can we do what can we improve and she was like let's just contact some of the hotels and the members clubs and let's just see if they're interested to host an event and we have sent those 55 emails i have sent them just before christmas and we have had a two responses and those two responses came from two establishments. They uh, become our regular um, clients. And we have done an event. We have done another event. And then events start selling out. And um, we have had fantastic feedbacks. Um, our one-to-one -one sessions um, grew as well. And, and yeah, and that's pretty much how, how it started. Um, we don't do things like other practitioners do so we're really 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 trying to make everything unique and bespoke every single thing we do is specifically tailored to the venue and to the clientele um we're trying to bring a spirituality into corporate world and um trying to make it normal <laughs> for people yeah. who don't think it's normal as it is part of our lives and that is where we came from that is our core it's, it is like coming back home um literally um and uh, so that's why it's it's not it, everything is everything is very tailored we have designed um workshops and events which are just ours and you can't experience them anywhere else and because I have been working with the earthy energy and Maria is mainly up there. She does the light language um, and the multidimensional um, healing, you know, and a galactic energy. 
I think it works very well because even though that I'm connected to true Palladians, I'm still very much earthy person and and she's not earthy at all. <laughs> she, she, is, she is out there. So so the balance, um, balance and the harmony is beautiful. Sometimes when we got clients, um, the clients get approached, she gets approached to do something with a client and she sends the client first to me because I'll do the earth work and she does yeah. the releases, if if that makes sense. So so yeah, and um, we started afterwards. We started a new company called um, Holistic Concierge London. Um, so that is grew even more um, the spirituality and the holistic um, practices and provide work for practitioners that have got so much challenge, but they just sit at home because they don't know where to start. So give them the opportunity to run their events and yeah, creating a platform, spread the word, make the change. That, that's brilliant. And it, and, it, and it's about collaboration and working with others, which is so important. I mean, that was the big thing that I said at the beginning of the year, um, you know, especially since it's a uh, 22 year, was that collaboration is the way forward now, trying to do things by yourself and it's just me 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 isn't going to work anymore it is completely about collaboration community working with others all working together for something that's beneficial for all rather than just the individual yeah mystic sisters would not happen without me and it would not happen without her absolutely it just it just wouldn't happen and i just want to touch up on what you said about the collaboration i think um during a covid when we have been forced to isolate, I think it's like pulling something apart and then and then bringing back together. It's like a magnet. And I think it has to happen for a reason, as you know. We have been designed to live in tribes. We have not been designed to live in isolation. And, you know, like I'm going to just talk about electrons and et cetera. We do need it um, for our everyday life or... Um, for us to survive, we need that personal contact. And I think um, that was one of the main reasons. So we are pulled apart. So we are experiencing how important it is for us to be bring back together. Um, and I think that there are so many, like, like you said, so many holistic practitioners and so many people with enormous talent but they need that support and they need that right support. And um, I, when it comes to when it comes to Maria, I always saw how talented she was. Like she's she's a prodigy, <laughs> and so am I. But but she needed to anchor the idea, yeah, in order for it to for it to manifest. And yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's where the Earth interview comes in because everything we create needs to be grounded in Earth because we are on Earth at this time. So we need to bring we need to ground um, all that stuff in. So it's so it's brilliant that you've both come together and you can ba- you know you can balance each other other out, which is absolutely amazing. And you also do podcasts as well. How did that come about? So I started a podcast. It's called the Barbara May Show, and I started the podcast on my own <laughs> during a COVID. <laughs> or it was it was slightly before covid and and it was literally i wanted to create a platform um which is there for people to find out about spirituality and holistic ways of living um through eye of um, scientists and doctors and yeah, just kind of like build that bridge between a physical world and the spiritual and a holistic world um, to kind of make it easy for people to understand. But also, I wanted to learn from those people. <laughs> you yeah. know, many people say that, but but that was, I was carefully picking my guests, but I've been a bit cheeky because I wanted to ask those questions. And I knew that if I'm going to have this platform, I am going to benefit out of that as well as the listeners 
So it has been an amazing journey and um, and I have put it to the side for now. Um, the episodes, like there are so many episodes out there. Um, I'm not concentrating on that at the moment. The focus is uh, Mystic Sisters and Holistic Concierge London, but I might eventually go back to that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something that's always going to be there um, as and when the right guests come along. Absolutely. Um, and that which will be absolutely which will be absolutely brilliant so um as you know i do guide meditations thank you oracle card readings and each week i like to ask my guests whether they would like a mini guide meditation or an angel oracle card reading for themselves and those watching but also i always like to ask my guests if they want to do something as well so barbara is there something you'd like to do Yes, I would like to do the reading for this month, uh, the energetic reading. It's not going to be long um, because I want to experience a garden meditation as well. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I want to get something out of this. Of course. <laughs> um, so, so we are in a month of October and um, the month of September um, was very slow. And most of you may have experienced that. Um, um, obviously, we had August, which was there to... Um, uh, to relax and things were not going the way how we wanted them to go but also the first half of September may have felt like excuse me that you tried to do something but you were still it's like running on a treadmill so the month of September was there for us to experience the healing and still pause and um, and and reflect so month of October is going to be all about communication I feel um, things are moving forward, um, getting responses for the emails. It's almost like um, you may have felt that you were just about to run, but something has stopped you and you were like on the top of a hill, but you were not going, the ball wasn't rolling. So this is exactly what the October um, is going to be. The ball is going to start rolling and things are going to start happening Um yeah, communication, I feel a lot of communication happening in between people, um, new deals and not necessarily new ideas, but discussing the ideas that you have already um, were thinking about and the projects and yeah. Excellent. I like that communication. Things starting to move for, um, uh, you know, afterwards. And of course, uh, you know, September um, ob obviously is sort of like, um, the time was the time of Mayburn as well. Um, so again, it's you know re looking back on what you've done um, and what you've you know and and um, gathering gathering your fruits of your labour, but going into that stillness that that period of time to reflect um, to allow things to start to gather to move forward. So it's brilliant that that energy is coming in for uh, coming in for October. So thank you so so much for that. You're that, that that was that was really good. So what I'll do is I will do a card, pull a card, but from that card I will do a guided do a guided meditation for it. So I think that'll work out um quite nicely. So let's see what the angels and the cards want to want to say. So what does Barbara and everyone who's watching this need to know for their okay. You didn't get very far with that one, did we before that card decides to jump out? Excellent. So close your eyes and take a deep breath in. And on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be in this space. Take another deep breath in. And on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be here. And allow your breathing to fall into its natural rhythm. Every in-breath relaxing you more and more and every out-breath just releasing everything. And just think about relaxing your whole body, relaxing your whole body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, all the way down your arms to your fingertips. For when you think about relaxing, so you will relax. Give yourself permission and allow yourself to relax. And I want you now to see, fully imagine or know a beautiful golden light above your head. 
the beautiful golden light of peace and relaxation. And just allow this beautiful golden light to move into your aura, that space around you. And as it does so, just feel it moving into your head. And as it does, just feel your head start to relax. Feel your eyes start to relax. Your temples, your ears, your nose, your mouth and your jaw. So relaxed as this beautiful relaxing golden light moves down into your sh neck and relaxes all your neck muscles as it moves down into your shoulders, gently massaging your shoulders like warm sunshine on a beautiful summer's day. I feel so relaxed as this relaxation moves down into your arms, down into your hands and your fingers moving into your upper body, feeling all your chest muscles, your stomach muscles, all the muscles in your back start to relax. As this relaxation moves down into your hips, your buttocks, your legs, all the way down to your feet, to your toes, and your whole body is just so relaxed. And I want you now to use your imagination and see, feel, imagine or know yourself outside of a beautiful cave, a beautiful cave that is lit with the most beautiful torches, beautiful golden light shining in this cave. And you take a step into the cave and you feel the coolness of the cave, but the warmth of the flames from the cat, from the lights, from the torches. And you start walking into the cave and you notice that there are 10 steps leading down in this cave. So you start walking down these steps, they're well lit with torches, each descending number relaxing you more and more. So walking down the stairs, 10, Deeper down the stairs, nine. Deeper down the stairs, eight. Deeper down the stairs, seven. More and more relax. Deeper down the stairs, six. Going deeper down the stairs, five. Deeper down the stairs, four. More and more relax. Deeper down the stairs, three. All the way down the stairs, two. All the way down the stairs, one. And you find yourself deep in this cave. And it's so dark down here. You feel that you're in an in-between space, underworld. What are you searching for? What are you looking for? What treasure can you find down here? What can you be curious about? So you start taking a step forward, might be a bit hesitant because of the darkness, but with each step you take, you feel more and more sure footed, more and more knowing that you're going to be uncovering that treasure, that treasure that lies behind, beneath the surface. And suddenly you hear a roar and you feel a warmth suddenly approach and you realize that there's a dragon ahead of you, but you walk forward with no fear at all. And as you get close, you see a beautiful golden dragon, a beautiful golden dragon that has the most beautiful looking face, a face of peace and understanding. And it's curled round a beautiful treasure, a beautiful treasure chest. But you can't just see what's in there, but you know that it's something magical. So you approach the dragon 
and it looks you in the eyes. And as it does, you feel that it's seeing deep into your soul, deep into knowing who you are, what you need, what you want. And he breathes his fire on you, but you don't feel no pain. It's as if you're being cleansed and cleared of anything that's blocking you, anything that's stopping you moving forward of finding that treasure, that bounty. So you sit in this flame for a moment or two, allowing the cleansing and releasing to happen. What blocks are being removed for you? And slowly the flames die away and you see that you're still intact, you're not burnt, but you feel so much lighter. And the dragon beckons you over towards the chest. And you allow yourself to open the chest. And inside you see the bounty, the fruits of your labor, what it is that you want to bring into your life, into the here and now. And you see it there, the great bounty, this treasure that you've uncovered. And it's so amazing. And this treasure may be physical, mental or emotional. It may be a thought. It may be a sound. It may be a knowing. It may be a property. It may be anything. But this is the treasure, the bounty that you need in your life right now. That you manifest to help you move forward. And you take that with you. It fills you up completely. You know you're going to be bringing that back with you to the surface, into the here and now. So you bow to the dragon and you thank the dragon for allowing you into this space deep beneath the ground, allowing you to uncover this treasure and accept the cleansing. And the dragon bows and blinks its eyes at you as you turn and walk away back through this cave, back to the stairs. And in a moment, you're going to walk up those stairs from one to 10, and you're going to find yourself back in the present, in the here and now, bringing back that treasure into your current life. So walking up the stairs now, one, coming further up the stairs, two, all the way up the stairs three, coming all the way up the stairs four, remembering your whole journey. Further up the stairs five, coming further up the stairs six, further up the stairs seven, bringing back that bounty, that treasure. All the way up the stairs eight, coming all the way up the stairs nine, ten, fully back, fully present if need be. Wiggle your fingers, move your body, open your eyes, drink some water, make sure you are fully back and welcome back. Thank you. So how was that? Very warm. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I wonder why. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Yeah. So anyone who's watching, please do, you know, when you've got yourself back, put in the comments, you know, how was the journey for you? What did you experience? What what did you feel? Um, you know, if, if you want to if you want to share it, what treasures did you get? You know, what are you manifesting? Um, so please do uh, do let us know um, in in the comments. So did you manifest what you wanted? Did you uncover that bounty? I felt a lot of gold. Everywhere was gold. It was like eyes, you know. And then I was just gold. I love gold, so maybe that's why. <laughs> if I could paint my body gold, I'll paint my body gold, and that's how I would just exist. <laughs> wow, be beautiful. Beautiful. Although obviously you do have to uh, remember the James Bond film and the woman who was painted in gold. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> so you want to leave a little bit of skin breathing. <laughs> And that, so the card that actually came out was uncovering treasure beneath the surface lies the surface lies great bounty. So it is saying to you and to those that are um, watching, you know, um, look beyond the surface of what you see, of what is in your current life at the moment, because there is bounty, there is treasure beneath it. Things that will help you move forward are, um, in your life, which you can't see if you just look at it as it is. You need to go deep within the surface and you'll be surprised at what you'll uncover, what what you'll find. Um, so, yeah. So and, and that really also tied in with what we've been talking about today as well. Um, you know, between worlds is uncovering, you know, who you truly are, why you are here, what gifts can you bring to the world? Um, and that so uh, yeah so thank you very much um, Barbara for uh, for for, sh for sharing this so do you have any insights or thoughts or last words of wisdom to leave our viewers so one thing that comes to my mind and it has been for quite some time is that I would like to say viewers that nothing is going to run away from you I don't know why but I just feel it's very important to say because sometimes we feel like this is it. There is always something else. Um, that seed, what you plant it in, in a soil, it's, it's, going to, it's going to grow. It really depends on when the sun's going to come out, but it is going to grow. So nothing is going to run away from you. I think that will be, that will be my insight for today. <laughs> Beautiful. No, that's, that's, a, that's a really brilliant insight. Um, that I think everyone watching, uh, myself included, can actually take away. So thank you so, so much um, for that. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful as I, as I know I have. Um, so Barbara, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? So you can find me on www.wearemysticsisters.com or www.holisticconciergelondon.com. Um, Instagram handle is at Barbara May underscore Mystic Sisters or <laughs> at We Are Mystic Sisters um, on Instagram. I would love to hear from anyone who would like to connect. Perfect. And what I'll do is I'll put those um, details into the comments or the links into the comments so people can just literally click on them and uh, and and go and go straight to them without having to type everything in, which always makes things a lot easier and uh and, and, and nicer to do. And if anyone um, feels that they they might be a star seed, what would you say would be the best way for them to find out? Okay, very difficult question because it just came to me. So let me just tune into that. Um, okay, I think they need to ask the question, what do I want? What is that thing that I want? And then you can book an energy call with me. <laughs> and I will tell you. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. What it may be. I, I don't know, to be honest. I'm not going to make something up. But I, I really don't know because for me, for me, it just it just literally happened. I was in denial for so such a long time. And and it just happened. I suppose just um, every, every star seed, um, has got the characteristics and what they do and what they stand for, uh, but you can be you can be two. So I don't know. Maybe that's something what you could, because um, you work with them as well, um, suggest more than I. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I asked that question, but that question just came in that I needed to ask it. So, that's fine. Um, so, 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 yeah. You, you know, and I'm actually more than one star seed, which makes it which makes things look yeah, complicated so it's for me. Not so easy. <laughs> no, it, it is. But but when you when you think that you might be a star seed, that's when you need to start looking um at things that are coming into your life and what you're guided to and you'll be guided to the right person, to the right book, um, to find out which star seed uh, you are. As soon as you get that thought, you will automatically start being being guided and there is going to because of the energies and the way things are coming in um, with other dimensions now and other beings, 
it's going to be there's going to be a lot more people um, that are now going to be waking up and knowing they are star seeds and why they decided to come here um, to help raise the vibration of Earth. So um, be prepared for that. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. And of course, if you are now ready to remember your divine presence and step into your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to connect with me so we can arrange a free video call to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life, as well as a couple of other free gifts. And thank you everyone so much for watching and joining with the show and your comments. And I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on my YouTube channel, then please feel free to subscribe. And because every subscription does help and hit the bell button to be notified of when this show goes live or when I post new guided meditations. Um, again, thank you so much, Barbara. It's been brilliant thank having you. you on the show and sharing your wisdom. Thank you so, so much. And everyone, I look forward to you joining me same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.